Hey, what's up guys? Uh, it's Preston here with Citizen Response. Uh, today I got a cool video for you, something uh, maybe to get some, some thoughts going, get your uh, wheels and your brain spinning. Uh, I know it's a really interesting topic talking about uh, survival, SHTF, uh, collapse, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's one of those things I think that when you actually start putting money towards it, uh, it's you got to really think out your gear and think out what do I need and why do I need it. So today we're going to actually look at something uh, it's called, I like to think of it as maybe like the, uh, the get home vest, uh, instead of like a survival bag, a bug out bag or something like that, which I did used to have in my truck. And I'll tell you why I don't anymore. Um, why you might want to consider something like this. Uh, so as always, you know, if you, you want to leave something in the comments, something to add to the discussion, I love reading all the comments. Uh, I hope you just enjoy the video, maybe learn something, sit back and enjoy. All right, so now a little bit of philosophy before getting into what I have in here. Uh, I used to have a really big bug out bag in my truck. I've got a like a toolbox in the back of my truck uh, that I had this big bug out bag. I guess um, the terminology you would maybe use for it is the inch bag. Uh, what is it? In I'm never coming home or whatever. Um, and I really thought about any realistic scenario in which I would have to leave my truck and bug out. I'm not bugging out to like just go live in the woods straight from my truck. Uh, in any realistic situation where I have to, like maybe my truck breaks down uh, and I'm in a really bad spot, like a very rural area, or some kind of disaster happens while I'm in my vehicle, do I really wanna be loading up a huge backpack that has everything I need to survive and weigh myself down? Probably not. I mean, with I have everything in here I need that I can cover a lot of ground and a lot of territory to make it back to my, to my house you know, where I have my supplies and stuff like that. So it's just one of those thinking exercise, a thought exercise, thinking about what do I really need? Um, how can I minimize all the extra stuff I have, right? Because I wanna leave as little as I can in that truck uh, for the possibility of it being stolen. So essentially, I kind of narrowed it down to the idea of having everything I need uh, in one little vest. And the reason I like the idea of a vest over a backpack is, first of all, this is extremely compact. I mean, I can squish and crush this thing down and make it about that big. And I can fit that so many places in my truck. There are lots of hidden compartments somewhere where I wouldn't be able to fit a backpack. You're kind of limited in your options um, with a backpack. You know, if you have a truck, you can throw it in a toolbox or you can leave it on a seat, but you don't really have that many options. With this, there are lots of nooks and crannies and crevices where I can shove this thing. I found a really good spot for it where it is actually like hidden in one of the small compartments. and it's not in the way at all. It doesn't obstruct anything and it doesn't draw any unwanted attention. So to me, that's pretty cool. Another reason I like the idea of a vest over a backpack is to me, now you could get a really low vis backpack, like a normal backpack. Um, but the thing about the vest is it really is more attached to your person. The backpack is you're, you're carrying it, right? Um, and so it's not really attached to you as much as something like this is I can cinch this down and I can run, you know, I could climb up trees if, I don't know why I would need to climb up a tree, but you know, maybe if I'm getting chased by a bear or wild hogs or something, I don't know. <laughs> but uh, I like the idea of this being attached to me. Um, I don't know why I'm, I'm something I'm thinking of. I feel like I feel like something like this is very, it's pretty low key. I mean, it doesn't look super tactical. This is just a normal bird hunting vest. And I could throw this over whatever I'm wearing and not really draw too much attention. Um, if I'm walking on the side of the road, for example, or I'm, I'm walking kind of in back country, trying to get back to, to my house or a location, something like this is not gonna draw a bunch of attention. Now, I'm not saying a backpack would either, um, but I like the idea that somebody can't just grab this off me. Somebody can, can't come up behind me, and now if they grab my backpack, uh, you know, I either have to let that go, or now I have to fight over that backpack. This is more attached to me. That's another thing to maybe think about. Um, and also like if you're having to like maybe jump over a river or something or cross a body of water, um, you know, I just don't like the idea of having something that could potentially drown me. Um, you know, like something like a backpack getting caught if I fall and get caught on a log or something, something like this is much less likely to snag. Um, and so I think there's a few different benefits as to why you might go for something like this over a backpack. Uh, so now we're actually gonna break down and go into the contents of what I have in here. So we're gonna start uh, over here with our right side. And the first thing we have, if you unzip this pocket, is uh, a few different items. We have a headlamp, 
And so having a lighting system uh, is just crucial um, because if you're moving, you may have to move at night or you may have things that you might have to do in the early morning. Uh, and I also keep it in a Ziploc bag waterproof just in case uh, this gets wet, it starts raining, um, that my you know electronic, uh, I guess you could say my electronic headlamp won't short circuit and I won't have any issues. Um, so there's no you know really other reason to tell you why you need a headlamp. Um, second, I've got a cliff bar, um, you know, just to give me some energy if I'm really hungry and I'm having to uh, cross a lot of ground and I haven't had anything to eat. Uh, big morale booster, these things are super good. Uh, I love this chocolate chip one. I, tempting not to eat it right now. <laughs> Next, we have a fire. Uh, so this gives me a few different options. I've got uh, waterproof matches, so this is in its own waterproof case. And this has tinder in here as well, uh, as well as the match striking surface. I've got a small big lighter. Um, this thing will last me for a long time. Uh, you can get a lot of lights off of one little small big lighter. And then I got some duct tape. Uh, guys, there's no shortage of things that you can do with duct tape. You can use it for medical. You can use it uh, for lots of different things for repairing stuff, fixing a boot. I don't know. I'm not going to list off all the things you can do with duct tape. Um, yeah, so that's that first little front pocket right there. Now we're going to continue on. And I actually have a face shield. Now this is not for COVID. I don't give two rips about wearing a mask. This is for potentially concealing your identity or even smoke. Uh, I had a situation where I helped put out a fire on the side of the road and I was really, really, really glad that I had this because the smoke was really bad. Uh, I had a fire extinguisher in my truck and a few gallons of water and I threw this over and I was able to get right up in there. And I'm thinking if I was in a situation where maybe I had to pull someone out of a burning car or something like that, having one of these easily and readily accessible uh, could be like life and death difference. I mean, you may need to get up in there uh, and for whatever situation, uh, you may want to conceal your identity or make it easier to breathe if there's smoke or something else. So something to think about. Now we're going to move up. Nothing in that pocket. And we actually have a rain poncho in here. I'm not going to take it out because it's kind of a pain to get back in. Uh, but having this rain poncho is just a really good tool to have because you want to be able to keep dry. Uh, but it's a lot lighter than uh, you know, pack, me having to pack like a full rain jacket or something in this, which interestingly enough, I could. There's enough pockets I could. Uh, but I've got a rain poncho. I can use it as potentially making for a shelter uh, if I, for some reason I need to sleep overnight, which I don't think I, I don't really see a situation in which I would need to. I could just keep moving, that's the idea. But being dry is always a good thing. So now we're gonna move on to the other side. If I can get this thing <laughs> oriented right. Here we go. So I got in these two front pockets, I got two little deals of 550 paracord. Uh, lots of stuff you can do with 550 paracord. Like I said, if for some reason I need to put up a shelter, utilizing that rain tarp, I can punch a few holes in the end, uh, tie off to some branches, and I can make myself a nice little rain tarp. Um, paracord, another thing you can do with paracord, you can actually make a tourniquet. Um, it's not my first choice, uh, but if you're in a mass casualty event and there's lots of people that are injured, it's better than nothing. Uh, it's better than a belt, and there's techniques on how you can use 550 paracord, strips of t-shirt, uh, to be able to make something like a tourniquet. Learn how to do that, go get go get educated, go get educated. <laughs> Speaking of tourniquets, we have a real tourniquet in here. Uh, you know, I don't like the idea of having to use anything but uh, the best, so this is a Cat7 tourniquet. Um, guys, just learn how to stow these properly. I, speaking of stowing them properly, this is not how you stow it. I'm gonna go ahead and show you, it's right here. I'm glad I mentioned that. You actually wanna stow it like this. So you're not going to mess around trying to pull this open. Uh, you basically can just flick this thing down, cinch it on. There are plenty of videos on YouTube of how to actually use this. Um, and so I would check that out. Now, the next thing we got is an Israeli bandage. Uh, now, this is not a replacement for a tourniquet. You're not going to be able to get the pressure you need uh, to pinch off an artery if you're hemorrhaging from an artery. But this gives you a lot of versatility with different kinds of wounds bites, scratches, cuts that are non-life-threatening, um, and also injuries to like the neck and the face where you can't put a tourniquet. Um, these things give you a lot of versatility. Um, and so having one of these is a really good idea uh, for infection prevention and keeping that wound covered up. Something that you should have if you have a bug out bag, bug out vest, you need to have some medical gear in there. The next thing we have is uh, actually water purification. So this is a Sawyer Mini uh, and all of the, the gizmos that come with it. I've got the actual Sawyer Mini. I've got a little uh, push bag that I can use and then I've got a plunger for cleaning it. Uh, and I've got it all in the Ziploc bag. Guys, I've used this a lot. 
um, and it works really well. Uh, I've drank in some very, very sketch water out of this, have never had a problem. Uh, and so having that water purification uh, is a really good thing. Now, I always have a water bottle with me. Um, if, if you ask anybody that knows me in real life, I have a water bottle like surgically attached to me. So uh, I guess if you wanted to figure out a way to keep an actual water bottle in here, you could like maybe a Camelback or something. But for me, I'll have water on me anyways. And this gives me uh, the ability if I find another water source to re-up my water or just drink straight from there. That's another reason I like the Sawyer over the Life Straw. The Life Straw really kind of puts you in a bind because you can only drink at the source. The Sawyer gives me the ability I can find any crap piece of crap water bottle on the road. I can fill it up with water and I can safely drink from it. So I can either drink directly from the source or transport my water if I'm on the move and I'm trying to get somewhere. So now moving up uh, some of the final pieces, uh, I have an extra magazine for my carry gun, which is the Glock 43X. Uh, it's a very lightweight gun, easy to shoot. Um, you know, I love it. And I just got an extra uh, 10 round magazine in here. Why not? I've carried uh, two magazines on my person, one in the gun, one OWB three o'clock. That gives me you know, an extra 10 round mag. Uh, say what you will, uh, I think that's good enough. <laughs> Next, we have a knife. Um, I always have a knife on me, but two is one and one is none. This is just a uh, Spider Co. I don't even remember what model this is. Uh, one of my buddies gave me this a while ago and this was my carry knife for a while, uh, but I have a different knife now because I like having a, gla a glass breaker on my knife. And so this found its permanent home here in the survival vest. Um, so that gives me just in case like my EDC knife were to break or something, or I wanted to have one knife dedicated for one thing. And this gives me, it gives me options. Now guys, this is the most important piece of this survival vest. If you have nothing else, you have to have this. Chapstick. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously I'm joking. This is probably the least important of everything in here, but chapstick is just a lifesaver guys. I don't know if you're like me, but my lips get dry. Uh, I, I actually was about to use it, but I'm not going to do that. Um, my lips get dry and there's nothing worse than having dry, painful lips. So just a very lightweight, little bit of chapstick just could be a lifesaver, um, unironically. So this is just a, uh, a Gander Mountain vest that my grandmother got me a few years ago. Uh, and I'm not really much of an upland bird hunter. Uh, that's what this is, is an upland bird vest. And I just didn't really have anything to do with it. And I thought, wow, this thing is small, lightweight, and there's a bajillion pockets in this thing. This is perfect for replacing a bug out bag. Now there's actually, there's tons of pockets in here I'm not even using. There's two really big zippers here in the back uh, that you could store something really big in here. I mean, you could put a freaking, you could put a whole tarp in here, which is something I've thought of. Um, now I'm not looking to fill all the pockets with crap because they're there. I wanna have a specific purpose for everything in here, which I do for everything in here so far. So this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, if there's anything else that you think I could add, maybe like a tarp or something to throw in the back here, maybe a freaking MRE. Uh, this pocket is huge, guys, it's crazy. So yeah, if there's anything else that uh, you think I should add to this, maybe I'm missing something. I think I've covered all my bases though. I've got water covered, I've got shelter covered, uh, I've got fire covered, um, I've got light covered. Um, and so I really think I have basically all my bases covered in this tiny little vest, um, which is really cool to me. I don't know why it took me so long to figure out to do something like this. Um, so yeah, like I said, leave a comment down below if there's something you think I should add something maybe I'm missing or something that you would take out or replace with something else. Um, like I do kind of at the end of all my videos, I thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Um, I just hit 700 subscribers, which is kind of wild. I never thought I would get more than like 50. <laughs> I just kind of do this for fun. Um, and you know, maybe I like helping people out. Maybe somebody can get something positive from what I'm saying. But if you've been watching my videos for a while, uh, you know, I always give a short message at the end talking about my faith because, um, at the end of the day, all this stuff is great. Um, I mean, I'm a survivalist. I'm a, I'm a little bit of a prepper. I'm a big EDC guy. Uh, but at the end of the day, there are things that are more important than just surviving. Um, you know, I'm not, personally, I'm not really afraid to die. Uh, I have full faith in Jesus Christ that when I die, he will fulfill uh, his promise to me uh, that I will have everlasting life um, whenever he returns the second coming. So I'm not afraid to die, guys. Um, so I think that that's something interesting to think about, you know, uh, are you, are you afraid to die? Really ponder that to think if I'm in that situation, uh, now I'm going to fight to survive because I want to survive. I want to see my family. I want to see my loved ones, but 
is that ex do I have like an existential dread at the thought of you know what eternity is going to be like now the Bible has an answer um, you know the gospel has an answer and it's free for all of those uh, who would accept it um, and so you know like I say it always you know if you need to talk to someone you can talk to me uh, if you want to DM me on Instagram uh, or you can just you know find someone you know or just open up the Bible and read it yourself guys so like I say Thank you so much for watching the video. I, I really appreciate it. I hope I didn't ramble too much. Uh, I hope that maybe you took something away from this. As always, get out there, train hard, stay safe.